Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, honoring heroes. You're the spine of this country. And all of us, all of us, Oh, you daughters. The service and sacrifice that unites our entire nation. They risk their lives for us. The touching tributes taking place here at home and across the country. Semper Fi. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany McGraw. John Carlin has the night off. People across the country are pausing to reflect on those who serve, and this Veterans Day was especially significant for Arlington National Cemetery as the tomb of the unknown soldier was dedicated exactly 100 years ago. The hallowed occasion started with a processional march in historic uniforms and formations with flyers from each branch of the military. It was followed by a wreath laying and an appearance from President Joe Biden. To all our veterans, past and present. We thank you, we honor you, and we remember always what you've done for us. Service members from nine countries that participated in the 1921 ceremony attended the event. The Veterans Day ceremony at the National D-Day Memorial was back in person with an elaborate celebration this year. 10 News reporter Alexis Davila explains why the tribute carries more meaning this time around. Kicking off with patriotic hymns, dozens of families embraced the Veterans Day celebration at National D-Day Memorial. While telling the stories of D-Day veterans, keynote speakers asked American heroes to stand up and acknowledge the branch of military they served. 92-year-old Daniel Valerio is one of two World War II veterans who showed up to the ceremony. Well, I'm happy to the fact that people are starting to recognize that if it wasn't for World War II, a lot of them wouldn't be here. People swarmed to Valerio to shake his hand and hear the anecdotes of his time as a Marine. But he spent the most time talking to the young ROTC leaders, like 15-year-old Serenity Miles. I thought it was really cool. I was kind of nervous. <laughs> but, you know, there's not a lot of them living now, so I thought it was very exciting. This year, there is a new addition. Take a walk on the Brick Garden, and you will notice 54 new names etched on the bricks. Five of them are gold star bricks to remember the people who lost their lives while serving for the nation. It's always, always in our, an obligation for us to make sure we're thanking our veterans for what they've done for our country. In Bedford, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. And this morning, dozens gathered at Monument Terrace in downtown Lynchburg to honor those who've served. The event included the national anthem, a tolling of the bell, and rifle salute. Service members and attendants ranged from World War II to Iraq and Afghanistan. Air Force veteran Michael Doucette was the keynote speaker. Today, Virginia Tech also honored veterans with a ceremony outside its War Memorial Chapel. Local heroes shared their stories of service and reflected on the importance of the holiday. A ceremonial wreath was placed outside the cenotaph. Well, veterans play an important role in our in our history at Virginia Tech, and of course they do for the nation as a whole, but uh, particularly at Virginia Tech where we have currently uh, veterans among our employees, among our students. The Corps of Cadets will also stand watch at the pylons. That tradition dates back to the 1980s. The National Center for Healthy Veterans in Alta Vista welcomed a former White House official to their Veterans Day ceremony this afternoon. Dr. Ben Carson was the keynote speaker at the center where they're building 100 tiny homes for service members. It's meant to provide programs for wounded veterans and help them get back into society. This really counters that. They become part of a team with specific duties, and if they don't do their duty, you know, it impacts other people. Organizers say the 100 tiny homes are broken up into five communities. Their goal is to complete the first one early next year. 
Turning now to your forecast where we are tracking rain and cooler air. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz is here to show us what to expect. So we're in store for some soggy hours. Yeah, this evening into the overnight, that's going to be the wet time for us. By the time we awaken tomorrow, the rain should be gone and we're soon then going to see the triumph and return of sunshine. Just a couple of showers here or there right now. We've got a few out across Bland. Giles with Grayson and Carroll counties with a little bit more situated really from Bedford County south into Pennsylvania County areas right along Highway 57 Highway 40 areas near Smith Mount Lake north into Bedford areas even close to Stewartsville uh, seeing some light to even some moderate showers as we speak all this moving to the north northeast at a clip of around about 30 miles per hour. Now this evening we're going to have some passing showers becoming perhaps a little more numerous as we head throughout the course of the evening with temperatures holding relatively steady in the upper 50s to near 60. Your Friday plan are showing temperatures starting out in the 50s, highs in the middle 60s. Temperatures still a little bit above normal on Friday. We're going to have a couple leftover clouds east early in the day, but it won't take long for us to turn mostly sunny. And yes, we're still going to be breezy at times. Now, of course, we've got those Friday night football games, those high school football games going on tomorrow evening. A jacket will be necessary. Maybe some hot cocoa to stay warm. But an umbrella, nope, you can leave it at home. Rain is long gone by those high school football games tomorrow evening. Brittany. A woman accused of intentionally hitting a man with her car is behind bars tonight. Lynchburg police say they arrested Melissa Gilmore for DUI and hit and run after she was found hiding in a field last night. The crash happened near a storage facility on Lakeside Drive. The victim is expected to be okay. There have been 61 shootings in Roanoke so far this year, and one local advocate is hoping to put an end to the violence through a community event this weekend. It will include music, food, and speakers who've lived through some of the gun violence firsthand. The folks from the community who know the community from the street who were a part of the gangs and were a part of the drugs that have spent some time in prison that can come back because they've made a change in their lives to be able to tell these young people don't make the same mistakes they made. The Stomp the Violence Fall Festival is scheduled for Saturday at Paradise Cathedral along Melrose Avenue. Social media at this point is an extension of our lives. We share important life updates with our friends and loved ones, but what you post can put you at risk. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett investigates what hackers are looking for and how to protect your accounts. Um, I had another friend that this happened to. 28 year old Jordan Allen is just like any other mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She has a two-year-old daughter and posts photos on social media to share with friends and family. That is, until one February morning, she woke up to find someone hacked her Facebook account. Violating. It was just violating. So you would select your devices. You would... Dr. Aaron Brantley, the director of the Tech for Humanity Lab at Virginia Tech, says it happens more often than you think. Numbers are very hard to come by on almost all social media platforms because they keep those numbers very close to their chest. The motivation is usually either financial or malicious. You have somebody who just has a grudge against you or somebody who doesn't like you and so they will they will literally try and defame you or try and go into your account to try and undermine your reputation or other types of things. But what can you do after you're hacked? Social media platforms is where your information is and that information is a direct link to your financial uh, and personal life in a, in a variety of different ways. 10 News breaks down the steps to help protect yourself tonight at 7. Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. A leadership change with local ties, the two areas where the governor-elect's transition team are focusing their efforts. Plus, another holiday staple might be hard to find this year, how the Christmas tree shortage is impacting local stores. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question. We'll get to work on your answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. As Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin prepares to head to Richmond, several people from Southwest Virginia are helping him prepare for that role. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder introduces us to the local members of his transition team. With nearly two months until Inauguration Day, Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin is creating a team to help him prepare to take office. I think it's going to be a big change in Richmond. Um, 
Governor-elect Youngkin has made that clear that on day one, he's ready to go to work. Nancy Dye of Roanoke is one of a handful of people who will help Youngkin pick administration appointments over the next several weeks. We want to make sure that parents have a voice in their schools. And we're just really about self-determination and building up the strengths and resources of our state. Youngkin spent the last week or so traveling the state and meeting with all his new colleagues. I've been meeting with legislators uh, and speaking to legislators from, from both the Republican Party and the Democrat Party, and that's been very encouraging. Montgomery County Sheriff Hank Parton and Delegate Kathy Byron of Bedford are also members of the team. Dye says their perspective will help bring more attention to the southern part of the state. We're going to be a great voice as we put together this administration to make sure that our needs down here, our strengths down here are well heard in Glenn's administration. Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. It is dry right now on the Virginia Tech campus. You're looking at a live picture from our Virginia Tech Sky Cam. We'll let you know when rain chances will increase for you folks in Montgomery County and let you know how long you'll need to keep the umbrella handy coming up. If you're hoping to get your hands on a live Christmas tree this year, it might be harder than you think. A nationwide tree shortage combined with higher demand means fewer trees in our area. Some suppliers are out of business entirely, while others say there will be a lack of variety. Experts say this all started years ago when planners were slowed down during the 2008 recession, but no need to panic or worry just yet. You just might have to look a little harder and spend a little more money is going up <laughs> you know labor costs trucking costs i think we're going to see everything you know up probably a good 10 15 percent this year experts say the best thing you can do is start looking for your tree sooner than later the franklin county sheriff's office is once again working to help give back to those in need through operation christmas joy in the past deputies sold trees but now they're partnering with churches businesses and civic groups in the community they're collecting non-perishable food items to provide local families three hot meals over the holidays, along with clothing and toys. Last year, due to the COVID issues and other demands made on our businesses and partners, we were only able to help 19 families. This year, we're blessed to help 37 families, and that will include nearly 120 children. The school district is providing the names of the families for the program. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. We do have some isolated to widely scattered showers around a couple right now just to the north and also to the east of Smith Mountain Lake. Looks like this area of rain situated along the uh, Bedford, Campbell and Pennsylvania County line may impact you folks in Lynchburg here over the next 30 to 45 minutes. A couple little showers also to say towards Independence and Galax, not to mention Fort Chiswell in Grace and Carroll and also into Wythe counties. All this moving to the northeast at a clip of around about 30 miles per hour. Main batch of rain though still west of us extending from Canada south towards the Gulf Coast. That's the cold front. That's our next weather maker. That's what's going to bring us all a better chance for rain here by around, say, 9, 10 o'clock. We're not going to see snow here with this storm system, but they are in other parts of the country. We've got winter storm warnings. We've got winter weather advisories. We even have blizzard warnings in effect for parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northern parts of Iowa. Yeah, winter is getting closer and closer by the day, no doubt. All right, I want to show you what we're tracking here. And again, as we head, say, from now through about 9 o'clock, we're going to have some scattered showers around. But it's really from 10 on where we're going to pick up on that heavier rain in association with the front itself. So after about 10, 11 o'clock through about 5, 6 a.m., we're going to have some heavy rain pushing through. And I cannot even rule out the possibility for a stray thunderstorm. Now, as we look further to the northwest, we actually have the parent low and we also have more of a northwest flow. That northwest flow is going to come into play for us here as we head later on Friday into Saturday, and eventually that's going to cool down our temperatures. In addition to that, another little weak upper level disturbance may approach the region on Saturday and bring the chance for a couple of west slope flurries and or light snow showers. If you don't live along the west slopes, you've got nothing to worry about. Just know that it is going to remain breezy from tonight through at least Saturday. Your raking forecast showing that we're breezy at times on Friday. We're breezy at times on Saturday. So if you are indeed raking, 
know that the leaves may be pushed around a little bit by Mother Nature. I will tell you that we are going to be for the most part dry here Saturday and Sunday with the exception of those West Slope snowflakes that could fly come Saturday morning. Now as far as temperatures are concerned, it's cool outside towards Hot Springs at 51. It's a little warmer towards Dandel at 67, 61 Lynchburg, 63 in Roanoke. Temperatures tomorrow not bad, but as the jet stream continues to dip here as we head into the weekend, that will mean colder air pushing in. We're only in the 50s as we head into Saturday, Sunday and Monday. For tonight, rain becomes a little heavier and more widespread. We're not as cool tonight. Overnight lows in the 40s and 50s. Three days zone by zone forecast showing highs in the NRV Friday 60, falling into the 40s on Saturday and Sunday. Wet tonight in the highlands and looks like you may have a couple of snowflakes by Saturday morning as well. Now, south side location. 60s here Friday and Saturday, 50s on Sunday. For Lynchburg, you're looking at temperatures tomorrow in the 60s. You're then in the 50s Saturday through Tuesday, back up close to 70 one week from today. For the Roanoke Valley, dry Saturday, Sunday, maybe a slight chance for a shower Monday. Otherwise, Tuesday and Wednesday, you're also looking dry. Appy? All right, Jeff, the NFL news pouring in. So are the emotional reactions around here. I'll explain that. And speaking of emotional, we should expect that and more Saturday for the Hokies Senior Day. What players are saying about their last go around at Lane next in sports. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. It's an absolutely glorious day for our own Brittany McGraw, Cam Newton, back in Carolina for what can only be titled Superman 2, the sequel. His contract running through the remainder of the season, $4.5 million guaranteed, could go up to $10 million. Cam spent nine years with the Panthers, then, of course, that year with the Patriots. Expected at practice as early as tomorrow, but Coach Matt Rule does not expect him to be active this week. The Panthers have P.J. Walker slated to start this weekend. Take on 10, get your picks in win the gift cards. I like the Saints to upset the Titans. Brooke likes the Raiders to handle the Chiefs. Eric thinking Russell Wilson will lead the Hawks over the pack. Freedom first. Brent rolling with the Vikings. William 49ers over the Rams and Jeremiah taking the Browns over the Red Hot Patriots. The Hokies have lost four of five and their starting quarterback remains questionable as we approach this weekend's final home game against Duke. But none of that quiets the motivation of Senior Day, which returns to near normal this season it means a lot there's been a lot of time and effort put in by these men and I want to send them out the right way um, so it's important to me to get this have a good have a good game and get us on the right track this week um, I think it's great obviously we have a lot of seniors this year I think we're up to about 22 we're doing senior day and I think it's really cool we get to you know go out you know it's gonna be a big game obviously and uh, I think it's really cool we get to send them hopefully we, we get to send them out the right way and, all right, this year's Senior Day is sure to feel a bit different than last year with limited fans and COVID protocols. That said, it's a 3-6 and six Duke team coming in to battle the Hokies. They are 4-5, and five, and they are an 11-point favorite. First and 10 region quarterfinals opening tonight with key matchups, including the two-seed in Region 4D, pardon me, the four-seed in Region 4D, EC Glass, at 8-2 and two, Louisa County. Uh, meantime... The Hilltoppers have been a regular resident at or near the top of the 10 strong poll. Highlights coming tonight at 11. More first and 10 notes you need to know. Franklin County currently underway, trailing 14-13 at the half. Covington had a COVID outbreak, so George with advances. And Saturday, North Cross plays Nansman Suffolk. Auburn star guard Ethan Milliron signing today with St. Thomas Aquinas, a D2 basketball power. Congrats to him. He was the state basketball player of the year when he was a sophomore. He's your first basketball player from Auburn to ever receive a mon monetary scholarship to play in college. News and notes for you, OBJ to the Rams as they're piling up weapons. The Liberty men against Regent tonight. North Carolina at Pitt tonight in ACC action. Coming up on Nightly News, that's up next. We'll see you back here at 7.